Hi there and welcome to our midweek reflections from St Andrew's Round Day for Wednesday the 13th of January 2021, my first reflection of the new year. I want to talk about the weather because we're so good at talking about that in this country. Um, partly because we've just had a whole load of snow, um, but also because I've just heard the forecast and we've got more snow forecasts for tomorrow and it's so exciting. Um, I love snow. Um, as many of you know, and I know it's a pain for some, but we're not going out anywhere uh, anyway at the moment, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem for us this time round. Um, so yeah, lots of snow forecasts for tomorrow, apparently. Um, so I want to focus on the weather today, um, and that's partly because two of the Bible readings for the Sunday just gone, um, given to us by the Revised Common Lectionary, look at... Uh, both creation and God's voice in the weather or in a storm. So I'm going to begin with both of these Bible readings to start us off. Firstly, the very beginning of the Bible um, and the beginning of creation. Uh, Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless and without void. And darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. I love, actually, I've grown to love, I have to say that, the uh, Genesis first version of creation in that opening chapter. Uh, if you can get beyond any idea or concept that it's actually a full-on representation of uh, how creation actually happened and just take it as um, uh, a story, a poetic uh, framework of creation, which got, considering probably how long ago it was written, thousands and thousands of years ago, um, I think it comes pretty close to the mark in getting a lot of stuff in what we might think of as a right order. Uh, if you take it in that sense, it's a wonderfully beautiful piece of writing. But that was just the first part, the beginning of creation that we were given for last Sunday. In the psalm that accompanied that, uh, Psalm 29, uh, we hear the voice of God in a great storm. And I always, when I'm out walking, I'm not one of these people that ever... That, wears headphones or anything because I love to listen to the noises of nature and things going on around me, um, all that's going on. Um, and uh, I think if we listen for the voice of God in the weather and the seasons that's around us, uh, we can maybe become aware of great acts of creation and things happening. So let me read to you from Psalm 29, the voice of God in a great storm. Ascribe to the Lord. O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendour. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all say, 
glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. As I say, the given both given readings for this Sunday just gone. So continuing the thought of uh, weather and also wanting to draw in my hang up this year of not being able to sing uh, hymns and particularly carols um, during Advent, Christmas and Epiphany, I want to share with you uh, a wonderful carol. And I'm not using the version in Rejoice and Sing because I like the slightly altered version that appears in other hymn books. Um, it's uh, a hymn, wonderful hymn written by Edward Caswell uh, back in uh, the 19th century. And uh, some of you know it as Sea in Yonder Manger Low, but some others will know it as Sea Amid the Winter Snow. And it's that version I want to read because it's got snow in the first line. Uh, so I love it um, for that. But the rest of the words are great. I'm going to read just the first couple of verses in the chorus. And then I'll conclude with um, the rest of it a little later on. It's one particularly for Christmas Day, but I think it's great to remind us that Christ is born in our lives already. Um, and so we need to be aware of that every day. In that sense, it really is Christmas every day. So here we are, Edward Caswell's great hymn. See amid the winter snow, born for us on earth below. See, the Lamb of God appears, promised from eternal years. Hail, thou ever-blessed morn. Hail, redemption's happy dawn. Sing through all Jerusalem. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Lo, within a manger lies he who built the starry skies. He who throned in heights sublime sits amid the cherubim. Now, cherubim we tend to think of as those cute little babies with tiny wings that uh, seem improbable for be able to to be able to fly. We see them in works of art and all sorts of things. I want to draw attention to them because I want us to think of the broader angel throng um, that gets so often um, thrown up in our during the sort of Advent, Christmas, uh, and into Epiphany season. Um, and I want to use a poem uh, from uh, a book called Winter, which is edited by Ruth Burgess. But the poem that I want to share with you is one written um, by uh, Benjamin Pratt, uh, and it's called Angel in the Dump. Uh, and it comes with a little bit of an explanation by the author before I actually share the poem itself. Uh, and this is what Benjamin says. Any home gardener knows that an unseasonable warm snap in January will wreak havoc on perennials and spring bulbs. So I put mulch, mulch the beds onto my to-do list and drove to the dump, the best source of fresh mulch in our area. It's also in mid-January, a green and brown monument to Christmas just past. I am not Catholic, nor was my grandmother, although she always insisted that she once saw the Virgin Mary appear at the foot of her bed. So I must have a special eye for glimpses of, well, here is a poem I wrote when I returned home after a remarkable grace-filled moment in that vast dump site. So here we are. Imagine your local tip may be as you hear these words from Benjamin Pratt. Like children, snowdrops, daffodils and crocuses need protection from January warmth that betrays a bitter cold to come. Day after warm day, the sun reduces their green tendrils to grow taller. A trip to the dump for mulch to blanket those naive thrivers reaps a surprise. Christmas trees 
that recently displayed joyous lights celebrating the nativity now are piled like matchsticks awaiting the grinder. They have no memory of the joy they pretended, nor the innocence they invoked. A bright colour embedded in crushed branches lured me to one tree, tucked amidst still fragrant boughs, green paper cones scotch taped for body, red rough cut wings, white circle for a face, a hand-crafted angel. And deeper I peered the crayoned words, Angle Mary protect us from guns. Angle Mary protect us from guns. A child's prayer, discarded with this tree, may be my mistake, snagged in the branches as they went, now an angel in the dump, a plea for all the innocents whom we discard from our memories, from our prayers, so quickly. I replaced the boughs around her, tucked her in, echoed the prayer, protect us all from guns. Child's prayers are often, so often, the most profound and in many ways meaningful. Uh, and that prayer to Angle Mary, Angel Mary, uh, of course, is one such prayer. And uh, maybe you've had moments like that when you've discovered something wondrous by mistake. But we need to keep our eyes open with all that's going on in the world. We need those angels at the moment, especially in this wintry season. Especially with our eyes maybe on all that's going on in the United States this week. Our prayers, our thoughts go to all of the people there. We pray for a peaceful transition as they move forward uh, as a nation. So bearing that in mind, I want to ask for angels to watch over them as I continue to read the concluding two verses of that hymn by Edward Caswell. As we watched at dead of night, lo, we saw a wondrous sight. Angels singing peace on earth told us of a saviour's birth. Sacred infant, all divine. What a tender love was thine, thus to come from highest bliss down to such a world as this. And that's the point. This is the world he came to with all the rubbish stuff that's going on in it and all the mistakes we make. This is the world God sent his son into. So I invite you to pray now with me. And again, I'm using a prayer from uh, Ruth Burgess's book, uh, Winter. And this, again, is particularly a prayer that I aim at all that's going on in the United States at the moment. Um, but it's called God of Ever New Beginnings. Let us pray. God of Ever New Beginnings. God in whom past, present, and future perpetually coalesce. As a new year unfolds before us through the dark days of January, through the vagaries of the weather, through storm, flood, ice or snow, though they may unsettle us, through personal difficulties which may beset us, help us always to remember that your light shines through the deepest darkness, that your love surrounds and summons us, that your life is stronger than death itself, and that your grace sustains us and is sufficient for all our needs. Amen. Thanks to Norman Shanks for that wonderful 
prayer. I close with a blessing, uh, which comes from uh, another Iona book, Hay and Stardust. Uh, and this is one of my favourite blessings for this time of year. It's called Winter Blessing by Mary Palmer. When sleet blinds you, hail drowns out voices, and snow hides your path. May you discern in each flake a star, image of the one that guided the Magi, and find in the pain of birth, death, or change, there is a light to guide you. Amen. So please continue to pray for a guiding light for the people of the United States of America this coming week. Thank you for listening. Good night. God bless.